Well, joining us for more on how that data played out across the fixed income space, we're joined by Casper Wolski from Fig Securities. Casper, warm welcome to you. We mentioned there we saw that US GDP data out overnight. Um, what sort of reaction did we see across bond markets? Good morning, Leanne. Uh, yeah, we saw those, uh, as you said, those GDP figures come out uh, at 2.1 per cent for the third quarter, um, up from the, the previously uh, previous estimates of 1.5 per cent. Um, seems like a big jump, uh, very much in line with expectations, however. Um, but the thing, we, the thing we look at is the composition of that, and, and uh, it was made up uh, largely by an increase in inventories uh, by, by businesses, so a little bit of concern there. Um, but I think uh, looking forward, uh, it's not really going to have a big impact on what the Fed does, and, and those expectations of them uh, hiking next month are, uh, are pretty firm. I think they're finally over about 70% uh, when you look at uh, market implied probabilities. So that short end of the of the yield curve is is sort of locked in locked in around there, and and yields are yields are relatively unchanged uh, given those GDP figures. Casper, I'm certainly seeing a lot of new bond issuance on the market lately, aren't we? I mean, what, what's behind this? Is it, is it based around that certainty in the Fed and I guess that playing into it? I think so, definitely. Um, I don't think it's it's just the Fed. I think it's all really all the major central banks around the world. You've got you know the BOG, ECB. Um, I can rattle off all the all the acronyms, but I think they've they've been really clear in their messaging to the market recently. Um, a bit of a shift away what what we saw a few months ago, and and in terms of what uh, what each of those respective uh, uh, central banks will be doing at their next policy meetings, um, I think is pretty clear. Market has the market uh, has a lot of certainty around that. So uh, from that sense, uh, you know, things, are, things are relatively calm. Um, and those concerns around Greece and China that we saw a few months ago um, have, sort of, have sort of abated for, for, the, for the most part and, and volatility has died down. So we're seeing a lot of these issuers return to market if, if, they, if they put plans off uh, uh, earlier in the year um, and more issuers are, are coming to market. For, for example, Next DC uh, just placed $100 million uh, in an unrated bond um, after having put off plans a little bit earlier in the year to do so. So uh, things, are, things are looking good for issuers. Um, Casper, you talk there about the, the credit ratings of some of those issuers. What, what relevance does that have? I mean, we saw Qantas um, upgraded last week. Did, did that have a large impact? Yes, yeah, so, so Next DC was unrated paper, um, but obviously there are, there are issuers coming out uh, who, who are rated. Uh, Qantas is a, is, a, is a very good example. Last week, uh, SMP, uh, they previously had them uh, as a, a non-investment grade, grade issuer and they, they upgraded them uh, to investment grade. Uh, so the impact there was, that, was their bonds rallied on the back of it, um, about 25 basis points uh, in, in yield terms. Uh, and investors who, who held those bonds with the view of, of the credit rating upgrade, uh, they were handsomely rewarded. But at the same time, that bond is now in the investment grade space and a lot of issues uh, a lot of investors who only look at that, that sector of the market, they now have a new, a new corporate credit that they, they can look at um, and, and there's been a lot of buying interest uh, come in on the back of that. Fantastic. Casper, um, we're going to leave it there but really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Leah. That's Casper Wolski joining us there from Fig